Yeah, this your girl Ray. Do another video real quick. Good morning, good morning, good morning, my people. Yeah, I'm up early this morning. <laughs> when I got me yeah, a cup of coffee. Sitting here chilling, minding my own business, waiting to go home. Yesterday was an interesting day. It was my birthday. It was my gateway of leaving my 40s, hitting 50 years old. And I'm going to tell the truth. I never thought I would make it this far. Didn't. I didn't plan on making it this far. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yo, life is a trip. And sometimes you got to, like, take perspective of everything and everyone, you know? I know when I started off on YouTube years ago, making videos, I was homeless. I was broke. But if I did not work the jobs I did through a temp service, and back then I was working through two different temp services. And then when it was close to the end of my run on the streets, I went and reached out. I went to the places where they service homeless people and got the help I needed to get me into my own apartment. I'm very satisfied with my apartment. A lot of you have seen the inside of my apartment. A lot of you enjoy <laughs> my videos. Just like and share the video. I think I did a video last night, but I don't believe I uploaded it. I might have deleted it. But certain things I was saying in that video was very, very true. And I think the reason why I deleted the video is because someone else was in the video that nobody really needs to um, know about. Me and him went on this journey together. I met him five years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then after two years of dealing with him. He got sick. I had to take him to the hospital. 911 is a very powerful tool <laughs> for picking, taking people to the hospital. And he ended up having surgery because, because he had prostate cancer. There's no getting around that. And he had that surgery, like I said, it was over two years ago, and he's still having complications, still having pain, still experiencing certain things that he never experienced before, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And I think when you do have surgery for anything, they cut out certain pieces of you and you can never get those pieces back. I don't care how damaged it is. I don't care. And the doctors are there, they're telling you, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to participate in certain treatments. And it is what it is. Life is very difficult, it's very hard. Nothing comes easy. And money is only a tool to fix certain issues. Money cannot fix everything. And I thought, in the back of my mind, if I could just become a millionaire, win the lottery or do something, would it fix my problems? Would it stop me from hurting? Would it eliminate certain things in my life? It wouldn't. I would still be the same person. It wouldn't change. It, it would change my address. 
It would change my wardrobe. <laughs> it would change my bank account. But spiritually and emotionally, would it, would it really change me? It wouldn't. I can get a passport and travel the world. Would I change? I can learn what other languages I want to learn. Would that change? I can go into different belief systems, whether it be Santa Maria, whether it be Islam or not. Would that change who I really am? Would it change? Nothing would change. It would still remain the same. And that is my self-reflection. Leaving my 40s and hitting 50 years old. So that means I have 50 years of certain experiences, knowledge. I have that. But does it change who I really am on the inside? Sometimes you could be 50 years old and still be stuck at 20, maybe 21. I ain't getting no younger. I'm getting older. I'm getting older. And I was watching TV early this morning and I thought to myself, my God, look how far I've come and look at the new journeys that's getting ready to happen. See, each time you get older, you're opening another door to another dimension. Some of us live in our sixth dimension, which which is located in your vocal cords. So that's why some of y'all are the most wonderful singers, the most beautiful entertainers, very talented people, because you use your voice to bring people joy. You have the power to turn people's emotions on and off. I'm getting deep with some of these videos. And I'm going to start getting dark on some of these videos. Because certain things need to be said. It can't be spoken by anybody else but me. We got people on YouTube saying that if certain black people are speaking different languages, we are not black. They are saying that if you have a certain last name, you are not black. I know where my people are from. I said it over and over again. Mohawk Indian, that's Native American. And Cape Verdean. Cape Verdean is in Northwest Africa. My great-grandfather came from that country way before 1920. And when he came to this country, he had to write down on a piece of paper that he is white. He is Caucasian. He is not white. He is not Caucasian. He's of Rick's mixed racial identity. He had a a black mother and a white father. The father just happened to be Portuguese. So I have a lot of relatives that live in Cape Verde. I have a lot of relatives that live in Portugal. I have a lot of relatives that live in different places in the United States. New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Georgia, Florida, Texas, California, 
We live all over the place. Some of my relatives have moved from the United States and they moved to Puerto Rico. Does that stop them from being Cape Verdean? Does that stop them from being American? Does that stop them from being native New Yorkers? No. You know, my adopted father, he used to have a saying, every time he got drunk, because my father was a big time drinker, he was a, um, he was a nighttime drinker, a binge drinker, someone that drank when he got nervous, when he became afraid of something. And he used to always say these words, say, hey, say, hey, everyone say, hey. And he used to say it so much, we, we made up a song about it. <laughs> we used to make different songs, and we used to go into my brother's studio and record the songs. I did a lot of backup singing back in those days. Of course. I wasn't heavy into smoking cigarettes or drinking beers like that. But... Everything changes. Everything changes, so it is what it is. And I'm good with that. Does it make me happy? No. But I'm starting to see more and more what life is really all about. Let me get a sip of this coffee. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the YouTubers that keep it real. They show you their life. I mean, and I be having fun. I don't care where they take us. I be enjoying myself. I be having fun. I be laughing. I be singing. I be dancing. And... I get in so much into the video and into what that person is talking about. And then I switch off from that video and I'll go over there and look at Tommy Sotomayor. He might be talking about certain things in the black community. I listen to him. He's very political. <laughs> he's very political. He's not a religious dude, but he's very political. He's conservative in a lot of ways. And, um, I just got to keep listening. Maybe he has a key somewhere that I'm not using. I asked it very, very plainly the other day, where are my house keys? My physical house keys I wear around my neck. But where's my other keys? Uh-oh. <laughs> 